In the previous video, we set up how this actual dev environment works when we've got a Docker container that's already running Python. It's actually built on WSL2, which is so fancy and fun, but here's the kicker. We can do the same thing with other interactive Docker containers, some that already have the packages preloaded for us. And a big one for the network automation world is going to be PyATS. But here's the thing, there's a little bit of extra work that it takes to get the PyATS environment up and running. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Let's go. Now, in the last video, we set up how we could work on isolated Docker containers, and I thought this was so incredibly cool, but I love PyATS, and I always want to work with the latest version of PyATS, and that's what this is all about. Now, there's a couple extra steps to getting up and running with PyATS, but it's not terribly bad. We already pulled the PyATS image down in the previous video. If I scroll up, maybe we can still see it, where we did a, yeah, right here, Docker pull Cisco test automation slash PyATS. So what we want to do now is we want to get this Docker container up and running. We'll do the exact same commands above. Docker run di for detached and interactive. I'm going to give this the name PyATS dev and we'll say Cisco test automation forward slash PyATS. Now one more thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put bash here one more time so that we get launched into the bash interactive shell. I'll press enter. We get no issues here. If I say Docker PS, I see that it's up and running. So back in VS Code, we should be able to go through the same processes one more time, getting connected to that Docker container. Let's click on the bottom left corner here, attached to a running container, and I see my PyATS dev environment. So let's let it get started up here. Now there are some things, some additional things that we need to do to get this up and running. The first thing we have to do is we actually do have to install the Python extension. In my case, it looks happy that it's already there. And in your case, it might already be there too, but I've seen it before where it detects that Python hasn't been installed yet. So first check your extensions and verify that Python has been installed within this container. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to actually get into the correct working environment. You see, PyATS actually runs in a virtual environment. And when VS Code connects to it, it hasn't launched that virtual environment yet. So check this out over here in the space, the workspaces here where I've got the option to open or add a folder. Let's click add a folder. And then what we need to do is we need to navigate out of root. So I'm gonna delete this out and we see PyATS right here from the list. Give PyATS a click and then click okay. So now we see that we're in the PyATS environment. And if I launch the terminal, I'll click on terminal and then no terminal, I see we're in PyATS. We still need to launch the PyATS virtual environment. And to do that, we type source space bin forward slash activate. Now there's still a little bit more setup if we want to use the full features of PyATS. For instance, if I try PyATS create testbed interactive, I'll say output into a folder called YAML. I'll call it my testbed.yaml. And I'll say encode password. If I press enter, see what it says here? This interactive isn't supported. And that's why we have to install this little additional contribution section here. So let's highlight pip install pyats contrib, paste it down here and let it rip. So now what I can do, since I've done that installation, I can press up a couple times and we'll try and create that testbed one more time. Check this out. Look at that. Now we can actually get launched into it. Do all my devices have the same username? Let's say yes, because I can connect from this Docker container into an instance of EVNG running on a completely separate piece of hardware. That's what's so cool about all this. Let's say Cisco, same enable password. All that's going to be the same. R1 will be the first one. 10, 10, 21, 44. SSH, iOS, yes, R2, 10, 10, 21, 23, SSH, iOS, yes, R3, 10, 10, 21, 195, SSH, iOS, and no more devices to add. There we go. My YAML test bed has now been created. Check it out. It is right there. Bye. We did it. So let's have some fun with this. Let's actually create a new Python script. Let's call it mydev.py or something like that. 
Now, after I've gone through these pip installations, notice it does take me out of my virtual environment, which is no good. We don't want to do that. So let's give it a source bin forward slash activate. Nope, activate. Here we go. And there we go. I'm back in the virtual environment. And I've created this little my dev script. Check it out. We're going to import my test bed. I'm going to do show IP interface brief for three of the devices, those three devices that were in my test bed. And I want to print all of them parsed out into JSON out to my terminal. So that's what the script does. And you can see it's located here within my Pi ATS folder. So in order to make this run, I'm just going to say Python. I'm going to call this mydev.py to run the script that's located in the PyTS folder. And again, keep in mind that I've got my virtual environment launched, as you can see right here with that little parentheses PyATS. Let me press enter here. And there she goes. It's reading the configs. It's typing the commands. And there is the structured output right there on the screen, all thanks to my Pi ATS container in dev environment. So that's been not only using those Docker containers to do an isolated Python environment, but also how you can use the Pi ATS isolated environment. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.